This is a short film about the Cultured Rainforest Project and the museum exhibition held at the Cambridge Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology in 2013. The project was a multidisciplinary collaboration involving archaeologists, anthropologists, environmental scientists and people from the indigenous communities of Borneo. Our research site was high in the mountainous interior and a location called the Kelabit Highlands. The Borneo rainforest is a remarkable location. The forest itself is perhaps millions of years old and people have lived here for tens of thousands of years. Many of these communities live in long houses or small clustered hamlets like this village here of Padali which was the centre of our research. Occupants of the forest include the Penan, nomadic communities that build lightweight temporary shelters often moving from place to place in the hunt and search for food and to process the sago palm. Favourite places to process the palm are often very high ridge tops like this location here called Babli Butt. The palm itself has a rich starch trunk which when processed releases a fibrous residue which can be stomped mixed with water to release the starch flower. The rainforest interior is also home to another community, the rice farming Kelabit. The Kelabit are excellent growers of rice and produce wet rice like this open wet field here in the township of Barrio and also dry hill rice. Getting to and from our study sites often involved harrowing trips up and down the swollen rivers, sometimes nearly turtling the boat, or long slogs through the forest along any trail that we could find, either up a river or through the thick jungle or following old hunting trails. Like all great rainforests, the Kelabit Highlands is a place of wonder and mystery. These moss-covered burial jars a hand cut from sandstone. Our research suggests that these may be at least 400 years old and possibly older than that. Today there is a continuing tradition of using imported tradeware jars from China, both as storage to produce rice wine and sometimes for the burial of the dead. To unlock its histories and its stories the Cultured Rainforest Project began a three-year program of anthropology, archaeology and environmental science excavating open sites, megaliths like these stone jars here but also Peripun, another form of burial mound. As well, we also conducted coring in old paleo-environmental channels and swamps as this will give us the long-term history of vegetation change and of human impact in this landscape combined with anthropology, we're then in a good position to look at the ways in which humans have transformed this landscape and have indeed been transformed by this landscape themselves. Okay, so now I'll take you on a tour of the exhibition itself. There are a series of panels dotted around the room and any time you want to read the text, just hit pause. So the centre of the room, the centre of the exhibition is the hearth. Now the hearth is a centre of human life for both the Penan and the Kelabit and that's what this Kelabit hearth here symbolises. And this is a very typical traditional Kelabit hearth, the wood stacked on the top that will be dried by the fire, lower level for storage, sometimes that can be wire where meat and other food is smoked uh, and preserved, rattan or, or reed mats woven um, out the front where people would sit and take their communal meals. And again all of this is very typical, there's a a rattan cop, uh, piece there for, for winnowing rice. The small ceramic pots, a little of uh, the traditional pots that used to be made in the Kelabit Highlands are called tuning, and they were once used for cooking rice. Now people use uh, metal pots, cast iron, and things like that that they get from traders. And again, just a range of typical tools. Note the enormous amount of organic material. A lot of the tools and equipment that people make are taken from the forest itself and that's all part and parcel of the cultured rainforest project 
whether you're Penan or whether you're Kelibet, the forest is the source of life. It is the resource. It is where all the resources that you use, both for the things that you make and also for the food that you collect and eat. Okay, as we step away from the hearth, we'll move over to one of the wall panels. This one deals with some of the paleo environmental information and also the archaeology. And here we've used satellite imaging, another technique to look at the distribution of important plant species uh, in this landscape. And here's some archaeology of a periplum. Life in the forest never stays the same, it's always changing. Uh, logging is now having a big impact. But other things have had big impacts with the Kelibet, such as Christianity, which they've now fully embraced and integrated within the forest here. You see a ceremony being undertaken outside. In the glass cases surround them, got a series of material objects that are important to life in the Kelibet. Here we have a Chinese tradeware jar that could have been an important heirloom item in a Kelibet family. My favourite object of the moment, a Batu Parahit. These are stone uh, pounders used for processing the sago palm. What's most interesting about these is they have no history. They were used at a time in, in prehistory, so people find these things in the forest. Beads are an important part of Kelibet life, especially for the women, uh, but also for the men. Beads were an important part of uh, wealth in the past, and they're important. Beads are worn at important ceremonies and other, and other important social occasions. And beads were traded widely by within the Kelibet Highlands, many coming from places as far away as Venice. Also within this exhibition are a series of photo, a series of paintings by a Kelibet artist called Stephen Byer, which explore the mythological stories and the mythological histories of the Kelibet and the belief in Lalut or life force, which imbues everything within Kelibet life, including the very forest itself. Okay, that's the end of my little museum walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. If you follow the link here, you'll go straight to the museum website where you'll find more information about the exhibition and more photographs from the Kelibet Highlands.